Hello, I'm going to give uh, my presentation in 15 minutes discussing stand and deliver in the context of the T standards and the 13 competencies. So I picked stand and deliver because um, my school is Conrad High School, which is about 50, 60 percent Hispanic, low performing. So stand and deliver is based on the story of this man, Jaime Escalante. And it takes place at Garfield High School in Los Angeles in 1982. And these, he decides to lead a group of students to take the AP Calculus exam. So I've picked this because I personally teach in the Five Point neighborhood at Conrad High School right here, which as you can notice is uh, notorious for its violent crime. And the school scorecard uh, shows that not too many people are passing the tests, and 1.4% are considered college ready. Here it shows the improvement of schools recently, <laughs> and uh, the increase in graduation rate from 2009 to 2011. Here's Conrad next to Hillcrest, and it's not doing very well. So uh, instruction and assessment. So when we look at human development theory, Piaget's, uh, Vygotsky's theories, um, when we look at risky behavior, peer influence, family influence, promoting lifelong learning, positive and productive environment, they're not in a positive and productive environment. Their families sometimes hinder them from learning. Uh, in one scene, the mother tells her that women don't like, men don't like intelligent women. Uh, so these students are supposed to be at the formal operational level, but some of them are still in the concrete operational. Uh, most of them are at the identity and role confusion area of Erickson's stages of personality development, but uh, as the theory goes, if some of these have not been taken care of, they're still working on them. Uh, so with these students, they're working on fidelity because of their conflict of identity versus confusion. Okay, with Vygotsky's social theory, um, we don't notice much. Uh, there's not much student-centered learning. Student -centered learning. Uh, they're not really leading development. Um, when it comes to zone of proximal development, most of them don't know much, but he's able to, he, it appears from the film that he's able to take what they learn and then slowly move them up to AP. Calculus. Uh, so zone of proximal development, okay, their community is not really helpful. So when we look at how learning communities work within each other uh, to move a student forward, we're not seeing much of that. It's a one-man show. So Kohlberg stages of moral reasoning and theory. These students are at the point here, stage six, where they question authority. Everything's relative. Uh, physically, they are definitely adults. But psychologically, they still believe in the imaginary audience, audience and the personal fable, as you can see in this picture. So when it comes to competency two, diversity and adaptive assessment, so there's language diversity, eth uh, ethnic diversity, ability di diversity. Um, we see bilingual, not much ethnic diversity because most are Hispanic in the film. Uh, ability diversity, some students have learning X. Uh, exceptionalities and some are more talented and gifted. There's no mention of IEPs or uh, least restrictive environment. Uh, when it comes to approaching diversity, uh, acculturation versus assimilation, there's more assimilation. Um, additive, subtractive approach to uh, bilingualism. Additive is stressed as being better. Uh, teachers need to recognize basic interpersonal communication skills and how those differ between uh, differ from cognitive academic language proficiency. In the film, we don't notice much of that. Uh, we do just notice that some of the students don't speak English. Uh, ethnocentrism versus cultural relativism. Uh, what's stressed is better is cultural relativism. In the film, we don't really notice much of this. So there's no real uh, debate between acculturation or assimilation. Uh, neither there's an additive approach, um, and when it comes to Calp, uh, he definitely helps with that. So here's the actual scene where some of these students don't speak English, and he incorporates them by bringing them to the front. Uh, competency three: effective instruction. 
There are long range goals, that is to pass the AP test. Lesson objectives, um, we don't see any DOLs or objectives, which is uh, how my school and Dallas wants. So he would definitely get points off because there's no DOL and uh, objective written. Neither is it written in Blue's love, Bloom's levels of thinking. Uh, there's not much cooperative learning, so we definitely get a checkpoint off for that. Um, instructional alignment, we're not sure because we can't see. Uh, mismatching between objectives, instruction, and assessment, we can't really see that from the film. We don't see any lesson plans. We don't really see a lesson cycle going on. Uh, motivation through student choice, we'll get to that in a second. There's no real uh, differentiation for people who have uh, different uh, preferences uh, in the multiple intelligences. Uh, cooperative learning, we don't see it. Uh, we do know from uh, Texas standards that it's better for a student to do it. They actually remember it less than when they read it, hear it, or see it. But at the same time, we do have STAR and we do have the SAT, and those are quite important. Okay, so competency four, factors impacting learning, uh, social learning theory, cognitive view of learning, types of knowledge, organizational skills, the community, the house, and um, learning styles. We don't see that. We don't see much classical conditioning or apparent conditioning uh, with positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement, negative punishment. We don't see much of that. Or social learning theory. Uh, we don't get to see him actually in the classroom. There's not much constructivism going on. So we can't really sense what the relationship between sensory memory, short-term memory, and long-term memory is. Uh, the job of the teacher is to encode. Um, <clears throat> they pass the test, so we would assume yes. We don't see a differentiation um, with non-routine or standard lessons. Uh, when it comes to the parental, we do notice that one student has an authoritarian as opposed to an authoritative uh, approach to teaching or to approach to parenting. Uh, the student is actually quite passive. Another student is quite rebellious, and we notice that his grandmother's sick is more permissive than authoritarian or authoritative. Uh, we don't notice him working uh, with different modalities of learning. So we don't see him working with the difference of field independent or field dependent. Uh, most of the stuff is abstract. He works well with them. Uh, facilitating learning, um, they pass the exam, so I'll give him that. But it is definitely more teacher-centered than it is student-centered. Uh, positive classroom. Uh, considering the environment they're in is not that positive, he does a pretty good job. Um, no child left behind, he's definitely working with them. Does he take into consider their socio psychosocial development? I think he definitely does that. Effective domain, sometimes he does, but the video we'll see shows that he didn't do the best of jobs. Most of his questions are more convergent than they are divergent, so that's, that's not good for him. Classroom management, he definitely breaks some of the rules. Uh, clear expectation of student behavior, that he does have that. Um, is it learner-centered? Not much. Management plan, he's kind of authoritarian. Um, distraction prevention, uh, some of the ways he goes about it aren't the best. Effective communication, um, most of his questions are more, di more convergent than divergent. Um, they're meaningful because he helps them pass the test. Engage student learning. Um, we know that it should be student-centered. It should be an inductive strategy. It should be an intrinsic motivation that and with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we need to take care of the basics before we get to the higher level. Um, in this, some of the students have a hard time and don't have like their basic needs met. Uh, external locus of control. We're trying to get an internal and we're trying to work with positive reinforcement. Uh, he definitely has like an unorthodox role uh, as a teacher, uh, coach, facilitator, guide, audience. We shall see that. Technology doesn't play that much of a role because it's 1982, but we do notice that he shows them computers. Uh, so there's no multimedia. There's really no learning communities. There's no FTP, fair use, uh, electronic plagiarism, IRCs. The feedback and monitoring. Um, it's definitely, we're worried about summative assessment because it's the AP test. 
The test itself is more norm referenced than it is criterion based. Uh, there's no performance based assessment. Uh, when it comes to family, some of the families aren't very supportive, but he tries to be supportive. Uh, professional roles and responsibilities, he's, quite, he's considered quite controversial. Um, he worked with the families. Uh, was he professional? That's questionable. He was definitely more proactive. Some of his nonverbal and verbal communication was questionable within the film. Uh, teamwork, he didn't really work horizontally or vertically. There was no professional continuing professional education. We didn't see or hear anything about campus district improvement plans. Uh, reflection in action and on action, on action, we didn't see that much either. Uh, yeah, as we can see, some of it was quite uncooperative. Um, Site-based decision making, um, not much of it. We actually saw more conflict than anything. Uh, we didn't hear about a campus improvement. There was no continuing education. Uh, during his PDOS, we'll see that in a second. Yeah, there were some questionable issues. Um, was he, sometimes he was more of a reactive than a proactive teacher. Um, when it comes to legalities, um, no ch yeah, public law 94142, we have some issues. Was there free appropriate education? Yes. Least restrictive area? Not really. There was no IEPs. Uh, when it comes to sexual discrimination, there were some issues. Uh, privacy? Yes, definitely. Uh, no worries about reasonable suspicion in the film uh, or acceptable use. There were no ARD meetings. Uh, fair use didn't come into it. FERPA, there might have been some indiscretions. As I said, with some of the slower learners, there were some issues. There wasn't much, there was more of a restrictive environment than anything. Uh, we didn't hear of any IEPs. Um, and within the context of the competencies, there's no mention of the film of the State Board of Education or the Commissioner. But let's go ahead and look at this film that I found, which I think highlights some of the issues and problems. So here I am going to show you. Can we talk about that? How many girlfriends does each gigolo have? Anybody? As we can see, we have some serious problems with these teaching methods. This would not be acceptable today in Texas or probably anywhere. Yeah, you can't touch students at all. You can't bring a weapon to school, regardless of what the demonstration is. Some it's Frank Garcia. the barefoot pregnant idiot. When I say Garcia, you answer, okay? One for boys, one for girls, and one for I don't know what kind. Why don't you go find out? So this film um, definitely stretches reality uh, with what is acceptable and what is more theatrical. Um, you're not like a, the, t the standards say that you're never supposed to be in a car with a student and uh, teachers are definitely liable for any situation that would develop in a car. So I definitely thought that that would be an interesting uh, end to my presentation on Stand and Deliver. Uh, even though he was able to help meet the requirements of passing the test, he definitely did not follow all the rules and regulations that are necessary for a good teacher. So would he be considered a master teacher? I would say no. And on the emotional level, yes.